Let's begin the devotion today with a song of confession, confessing our need before the Lord. that we need you we need you we came to realize this because of your amazing grace toward us and your faithfulness has been just amazing and overflowing us Lord I pray for those who are going through a dry period in their walk with you oh Lord I pray that they would not stop reaching out to you that they would continue 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 and persist and persist and persist and press in because Lord we need you Life is, is worthless without you. You created us for yourself. We are restless without you. Jesus, in your name we pray. Amen. Love that overcomes death. Love that overcomes death. A love that defeats death. 
a love that transforms death. When we think of death, we usually think of fear, dread, loneliness, even hatred. But when God sees the death of his loved ones, his saints, the Bible says it is precious to him. It is something that is altogether positive. Psalm 116 verse 15 says, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Obvious, you can't take it in a morbid way where God takes his saints and makes them suffer and kills them and he derives some kind of a sick joy out of that. Obviously, that's, that is not what is in view here. No, it's love. It's love. From the point of view of love, when God sees his saints as they die physically, it is precious to him. How so? Well, first, think of the greatest saint that ever lived, the most holy saint that ever was. King Jesus, was his death precious to the Father? Absolutely. It was the most precious death that ever occurred in human history. It was God's desire that Jesus' death would happen. The answer to the question, who killed Jesus? Who wanted him to die? Most profoundly can be answered with this answer, that God the Father himself killed him. Ultimately, it was God's pleasure that Jesus would die. Isaiah 53, one of the most famous passages regarding Jesus' sacrifice for us, verse 10, again here, verse 10, it was the will, the desire, the pleasure of the Lord to crush him. He, the Lord, has put him, the Messiah, to grief. When his soul makes an offering for guilt, he shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his day. The will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. And now we see why it was the Father's will to crush him, why Jesus is crushing his humiliation, destruction on the cross, his death on the cross was precious to the Father because through his death, Jesus would make an offering for guilt. That through his death, Jesus would have many offspring. And through his death, the Father would prolong Jesus' days. And through his death, the will, the plan, the pleasure of the Lord will prosper in Jesus' hand. God humili humiliated him. God allowed him to die. God killed him that he might raise him from the dead and exalt him. He humbled his son that he might magnify him. It was the Lord's pressure, pleasure. And Jesus' death was precious in his sight. And because of Jesus, our death, the Bible calls the, the believer a saint. No matter how much sin you have been involved in throughout the week, God calls a saint for Jesus' sake. When addressing all kinds of problems in the Corinthian church, the Apostle Paul begins with the gospel affirmation, Saint! Saints! In Corinth. So, right here, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. This is, applies directly to you and to me. Then how is our death precious? Why is our death precious to God? Well, first think about why this death is precious to us. In a very real sense, death is a door for us. Death is something for us to look forward to, not to be avoided. To build up to, to live our lives in a worthwhile fashion so that we build up to that day when we pass through the door of death into what? Into the, the presence of Jesus like we've never known it before. That's what the Apostle Paul says, right? Famous passage in the book of Philippians, the letter to the Philippians. 
The Apostle Paul says, for me to live is Christ. To live is Christ. To live is Christ. I'm all about Jesus as I live here. But to die is gain. It's gain. Well, what does he gain? He goes on says, I have a hard time choosing between the two. If I stay here, it means more benefit for you. But if I die, I go to be with Christ. In other words, for the Apostle Paul and for us, in principle, if not in experience, more and more in experience, I pray, to live is Christ. I am all about Jesus. I am all about God. And when I die, it will be more of Jesus that I receive. More of Jesus that I will know. Oh, my soul longs for that day. Our death is precious to us. When you go to a funeral, often you will see this. Some people get so worked up and so distraught at a funeral, it is like the grave of their loved one is going to suck them in whole as well. Maybe you have seen those scenes. Contrasted to that, I, I'm thinking of one specific, and there were many, many examples of this, but one specific family of a mother who had loved the Lord her whole life. I think she was almost 100 years old when she died. And the funeral was a beautiful sight to behold, a wonderful ceremony to be a part of. Truly, God's comfort was flowing that day. And at the end of the funeral, when everybody had gone, I looked behind me and I saw the immediate family gathered around the gravesite, worshiping, singing praise. When talking about the funeral that was, what was, that was to happen, I think it was before the funeral, when I spoke to the deacon who was the son of this dear lady, he said, this is the day we look forward to. Why should we be overly sorrowful? Yep. The Bible does not deny you the, the outlet of grief at a funeral. Jesus himself knew how to cry at a funeral. But there is a hope. And there is a preciousness to that death that people who don't know Jesus cannot be expected to understand. So, it is precious to us. Our death is precious to us. But we see here that because of what He is doing, what God is doing with us, because we go to Him, it is precious to us. And for the same reason, it is precious to Him. Precious, let me elaborate just a little bit. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Because in Jesus, through that death, his saints come home. This is a love. The love that conquers death. That's Jesus' love of the cross. The love that conquers death is the pleasure that God the Father enjoys in our oneness. This is the love that you and I, therefore, can express and sing. You know, the Psalms speak of worshiping God, loving Him, adoring Him, but very few times it actually expresses, says expressly, I love the Lord. This is one of the few times. Psalm 116, verse 1, I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my pleas for mercy, because he has saved me. Love the Lord, loved one, in word and in life. Precious in the sight of the Lord. What the world hates most, fears most, for us and for the Lord, can be precious. Love that overcomes death.